Opportunities. Opportunities are everywhere as the crypto markets have experienced a pullback. Which altcoin should you put on your radar? Also, as gold has spiked, uh, is it a better place to be in gold or Bitcoin? We're going to have that discussion. How can you protect yourself as inflation continues to go up? A big Ethereum upgrade is coming. Uh, will this put Ethereum back on top as far as user experience? Uh, we're going to discuss that. Also, a bug in a smart contract on Ethereum Layer 2 Blast makes people lose $25 million. What project could have solved that? The answer is ICP. How? We're going to share that in today's, uh, today's live show. Also, we're going to take a look at the markets. We're going to take a look at Bitcoin ETF flows. Grayscale selling is ramping up yet again. Is it over for real this time? We'll discuss that and much, much more on today's episode of Forest Friday, Sin City Crypto. Let's go. Hola! It's your boy, Big Bra, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. If it's your first time checking us out, we're, well, the entertainment-focused cryptocurrency channel. We take all boring and stale information and repackage that thing up in a fun, sexy, entertaining, Sin City, Vegas kind of way. Wow. There it is. You know, a uh, big I spill off. You know, ICP has a uh, reverse gas pump. Did you get a reverse tan as you look right on the lighter side? I did. First hand, first guess. Uh, guys, Friday, my favorite show of the week. Why? Got my man Forrest joining us. Forrest, how you doing, brother? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. We're excited to have you, man. Thank you so much. A lot to talk about today. So let's jump right in. Um, there is a chart that has made its way around social media and all the uh, financial pundits. And uh, it's a little concerning. And so we're going to talk about that. And that is this chart here. So this is the price of gold versus the price of the 10-year U.S. Treasury. And you can see here, going back to 2007, they have moved in tandem. Up until uh, more recently, I would say, uh, around the end of 2022, 2023, and you see a massive divergence uh, that happened just a couple of months ago as gold crossed $2,400 and treasuries went down. We also had one of the worst performing treasury auctions just two days ago as metrics across the board were slumped. Uh, we know inflation's back on the rise again. And so what should people be doing? Should people be getting into gold or Bitcoin? We're going to have that discussion. A couple of things I want to share with you. I want to give a shout out to Forrest for uh, 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 texting these to me yesterday. So what are countries doing? Well, Turkey... Uh, went from 439 tons of gold in Q2 of 2023 to 540 tons of gold in Q4 of 2023. You also have central bank gold reserves show China and India buying more gold than any other nations. Uh, you can see here China has a little less than 300 tons of gold. Um, and so you can see here this chart here. You got China, India, Turkey, Poland, Singapore. So countries are buying gold. We also have this Zimbabwe's currency will be anchored to gold. So going back to the gold reserve. Um, and then we have, uh, we have this, which is going to be the anchor of our discussion here. So Bitcoin versus gold, which is the better inflation hedge? Should be an interesting conversation. So um, a, a few people kind of chimed in on this. First one is Chris uh, Cooper, director of research for Fidelity Digital Assets, said, if your inflation expectation is going from 3 to 6% per year. That's a huge change, and Bitcoin tracked that perfectly during the pandemic and post-pandemic with all the money creation. Uh, you can see here the chart of volatility of Bitcoin versus other assets, including the stock market, including gold, real estate, and the U.S. dollar versus the euro. And Bitcoin, of course, is in blue. So, Forrest, I'll start with you first. What are your thoughts on how gold has been reacting what are your thoughts on this chart and what are your thoughts on on how you think bitcoin will fare uh in an environment if this this trend continues yeah it it's um i think a much higher risk inflation hedge if it if it is one if it does trade like one um ultimately i think bitcoin is is still treated by the vast majority of the world as a risk asset um i know within the crypto space 
A lot of people, you know, firmly believe that it is a kind of a, a risk off asset or an, an inflation hedge, but it is still something that just simply based off of volatility, um, I would classify as a risk asset. That's not to say that it couldn't be a big benefactor in the future if we do see a, an inflationary spiral. I'm very open to that possibility that Bitcoin does end up trading uh, like a strong inflation hedge. Uh, but if you're looking for something that is, I would consider a, a lower risk inflation hedge, um, if you're talking about, you know, securing your entire net worth and you have a significant amount of net worth and you you're not wanting to get wiped out on a 40 50 60 percent correction which we've seen in the past for bitcoin i would go with gold um and better yet probably a mixture of both depending on what your risk threshold is um if if you're somebody who has a higher risk threshold maybe you're younger maybe be more heavily weighted towards bitcoin um if you're somebody that's close to retirement i'm not a financial advisor i, I can't give financial advice um, but I would never in a million, like if you're, if you're, you know, 60, 65, and you're looking to retire next year, I wouldn't put your net worth in Bitcoin, right? And and that's not, you know, a knock on Bitcoin. That's not to say I don't think it's going to perform well. Um, that's to say you just don't want to be in a situation where, um, you know, something happens and you have a 30% drawdown in your net worth right before you're planning to retire. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you got to kind of, you know, make that decision on your own. I think, both have the ability to trade very well um, in an inflationary you know, spiral scenario. Um, but I think the lower risk, if, if we're just being objective here, um, the, the lower risk one with uh, a more of a historical track record of trading well during times of inflation is gold. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, see, I see both sides of the argument, but uh, probably a mixture of both is, is not a bad idea. So what needs to change then for us for people to truly look at Bitcoin as an inflation hedge? Is it just price volatility or is there something else? Yeah, I mean, I think some of it comes down to volatility. The other part of it comes down to liquidity. It's like if you're um, somebody who is managing very, very large amounts of money, um, you can't put your entire you can't you can't go and um, you know buy as much Bitcoin as you can gold right now without affecting the price of Bitcoin. It's just a less liquid, more volatile market. So if you are a nation state, for example, if you are the country of Turkey or you're the country of China, you can't go and put you know half of your currency or twenty. 10% of your current, whatever, you know, you, you can't go and put just massive, massive, you know, trillions of dollars into Bitcoin um, without driving the price up significantly. Um, whereas you can actually, cons you know, you can, you, you, if you are a large, large, you know, institution fund or nation state, like you can, you can bid gold and, and it's a pretty liquid, uh, low volatility market. I know it's volatile, right now in the sense that it's up like 10% in the last couple of weeks. But, you know, that's a big difference in terms of, you know, looking at what that same, those same inflows would be uh, into something like Bitcoin. I think um, Bitcoin is just going to, it, it's, it's on the right track. It's just going to take more time for it to get to the size, uh, to have the amount of liquidity where you can start to see. Um, I know we've seen like El Salvador and some smaller countries enter the space, which is a really good sign for Bitcoin. Uh, but for us to see, you know, very, very large countries um, look, to Bitcoin as 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 a tool um, for you know hedging against inflation or whatever whatever their end goal is, um, it just needs more liquidity. It needs to be bigger, which is only just going to take time. It's just going to take time, in my opinion. Rob, what are your what are your thoughts on this on this conversation? And um, do you do you kind of agree with Forrest as far as what he said about uh, you know why Bitcoin is not considered? It's just not as liquid. You can't really put any significant amount of money. When we're talking on a nation state level, we're talking potentially trillions of dollars, right? Or trillions of you know yeah. currency value. Is, uh, right now, for a nation, it's not. It doesn't fit any replacement standard, right? Because for replacement, you're going to need a massive amount. You're going to need liquidity. You're going to need also the suppression of volatility. Right, that's the reason why nations go to gold is because, well, look at the price of gold over the last 15 years hasn't fluctuated in giant swings. It lacks the volatility. Also, you do lack the upside as well with some of these larger commodities like gold. Uh, with that said, I don't, I don't see any reason for replacement currency or any reason of a replacement of bonds as far as the is in far as the large percentage of, of nation states uh, holdings. Now, 
Now that's that's all comparative to size, though. Now, if you if you zoom out or or actually zoom in, excuse me, and you look at retail individuals, small businesses, companies, uh, branch managers, uh, institutions that aren't gigantic and publicly traded, like in the likes of the Apple and uh, Google, these smaller companies they can put a position in on Bitcoin. They could put in a position on crypto. They can hedge their bet, right? Uh, they're not going to move the markets because they decide to pick up a couple million dollars worth of Bitcoin. A couple million dollars worth of Bitcoin might be a lot to me and you, but at the grand scheme of things, it's still just a drop in the bucket when it comes to liquidity. But when you're talking about billions and eventually trillions of dollars that nation states hold, it's kind of hard for them to get in in any significant way. Now, with that said, it does open the door to getting exposure. And we're seeing the likes of El Salvador and perhaps Middle Eastern countries with where we are where we are suspecting that Mr. 100, the mysterious wallet address that keeps buying 100 Bitcoin and more every day, it seems to the 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 clues have pointed towards Middle East. And so perhaps there's a nation state there, or at least some giant mogul that uh, has respect of the uh, political system and basically just the biggest whales in the world, uh, I think that is representative of what we're seeing, right? Nations are starting to dabble. Nations are starting to get a exposure. Maybe not across the board because there's a lot of hesitancy, but I think you'd be surprised to find out if we had a list of countries where they have some exposure to crypto, I think you'd be surprised to see that that list is probably... Uh, at least 20, 30, 50, 60 countries long. I mean, the U.S. is one of the largest holders of Bitcoin as well. Yes, it's for forfeiture and seizures, but they still have a lot. And to simply dismiss it as, oh, oh the U.S. is just something they, they had compromised, something they stole or does something they would seized. Like, does it make sense to you? You know, someone brought this up. I, I forget where I saw it, but like the U.S. government, right, the, the reserve currency, they can print dollars at any time, right? But they're selling the Bitcoin for currency that they can just print. It's just very interesting. Um, for me, I take a look at um, what is Bitcoin doing, right? It's got the volatility. And I know for some people, they don't like volatility. But as Michael Saylor has said, uh, volatility brings in the investors. Volatility brings in the people. Now, of course, if, you're only, if, you're, if your only goal is, hey, I got, a, I got $10 million in... 10 years, I want to have the same purchasing power as I have now. Cool, great. Gold, silver, yay, that's awesome. When we take a look at the average person who is looking around and seeing, hey, I'm spending another, I'm spending an extra $445 a month on groceries. I got to go pick up a second job, as you've seen with the jobs creation report. What they don't tell you is we have a net outflow of full time jobs. So we're losing full time jobs, and those job creations are all part-time jobs from people that already have full-time jobs. So people are moonlighting, picking up second jobs just to keep pace with inflation and be able to, to provide basic needs and goods and services for themselves and their families. And so you're in this rat race, a spiral of never ending, and it's only gonna get worse. And so people are looking for a lifeline and that lifeline uh, comes in the form of Bitcoin, gold, silver, um, I don't think it's wrong to say that it's probably a good idea to hold some precious metals like silver, like gold. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, we fully believe in Bitcoin here. And although it might have some volatility uh, and, you know, let's say you need to pull on that money at like the exact wrong time. Sure. But over a three, four, five year period, over a two year period, uh, Bitcoin's going to bring you back more money. Uh, real quick, Forrest, before I move on, what is your what is your ideal inflation hedge portfolio is it 60 percent gold 20 percent bitcoin 20 percent silver what, what, what does that look like for you right now like okay so like if you're if your entire goal was to hedge against inflation like right now i'd be very 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 heavy gold like um 60 70 percent i feel very underexposed to gold right now um 60, 70% gold, like maybe 20% silver and then 10% Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin. Um, 
Yeah, I'm I'm just like I'm I'm ext- I'm like insanely bullish gold, like more so than anybody probably realizes. Like there's I I've I've been doing more research into it. And I'm not not quite ready to articulate the thesis yet, but um I I think there's a scenario where gold in like the next 4 or 5 years like 4 or 5 x's, um which does sound really really crazy, but um when you look into you know, how much, how much, um, U S debt like China and BRICS countries own. And if they were to just nuke that debt, which they've already been selling off large amounts of it, it basically puts the U S into an inflationary spiral. Uh, we'd have to buy back all of that debt or raise rates like, and just see a, a huge recession, both scenarios are, of which are really, really bull, bullish for gold. Um, not to be like an alarmist. I think that's, you know, just one scenario to consider, but, um, you know, Bitcoin may do really well in that scenario as well, but I'm, I'm just, I think gold is extremely under owned. I'm more bullish on it, like in the last few weeks than I've ever been ever. Um, which sounds kind of crazy. I get, it's a boring asset, but, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll probably be c- cons- making that thesis a little bit more concise as I do more research on it. Um, very interesting market though. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Robin? Well, what is your perfect hedge against inflation portfolio? What does that look like percentage wise? Just real quick. Just a basket of commodities. I mean, whatever you're most comfortable with, I think that it goes to the individual. Uh, if what you, about you personally? 50% the thing Bitcoin is, is I don't, I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the giant stack of capital sitting on the side. I, I don't, and so. I have more short-term investments. So I don't, I don't have a blueprint for hedge against inflation. So if you ask me, I, I, just, I, don't have, I don't have hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars or retirement account. I just short-term invest. So for me personally, my recommendation to, to those of you uh, is to have a measured focus on what, it, what is important to you. If you're trying to protect your capital, I would stick to what you know. Uh, if you're familiar with gold and commodities and, or perhaps uh, large index funds, uh, bonds, some are better suited. Uh, I, and as Forrest mentioned, you know, I, I would look at the person's situation. If you're 40 years old or saving for retirement and you got another 15 years in the workforce, uh, then I, I would suggest you look into Bitcoin. I think that over a longer time horizon, 10 years, I think Bitcoin is going to outperform any large commodity out there right now in the market. Also, if you have the shorter window and maybe you're not comfortable with crypto, I still, I still think that crypto is not suited for everyone. Really is not. I think that people that uh, are nervous with volatility, that need to draw on cash in, an, in a moment's notice because they don't have a large amount of money set aside, I don't think crypto is right for them. And so it fits certain scenarios. So my recommendation for you, if you're, if, you're, if you're looking at your savings, your retirement fund, and you're concerned moving forward that you're going to lose purchasing power, which you ev- uh, most, most certainly will, and you should see what, what is the, be- the tools that best fit you, maybe evaluate the market and your own personal situation. I think all in our shit, man. Good idea. ETF coming, baby. Uh, all right. Before we move forward, I would like to give a big thank you to our uh, channel sponsor, Cam's Blue Wire Technology. You run a business and want to maximize your networking, IT, and your cybersecurity, there is no better company to go with than Cam's, which is why they've been a sponsor of our channel for well over one year. We're proud to have them on board. Visit bluewiretech.com or click the link in the description of this video. I do want to talk about this. ETF flows yesterday. Um, well, we were both wrong. Uh, 124 million flowed out of Grayscale. Uh, but 192 million flowed into BlackRock. The rest are negligible, bringing us a net inflow of $91.3 million. Also, BlackRock hits new record $10.5 trillion in assets under management, obviously thanks to BTC and the amount, uh, amount of buying that's happened from their IBIT uh, product. And then we have a potential massive catalyst coming soon. The Hong Kong Bitcoin ETF will get approved and could potentially unlock $25 billion in demand from Chinese investors. We also had, we shared news yesterday on the live that South Korea's opposition party just won in the parliament and they're extremely pro-Bitcoin 
and they have pledged to introduce the Bitcoin ETF products from the United States to their citizens in South Korea. Uh, we shared this yesterday. They're the fourth largest economy in Asia, 14th largest in the world, just over $1.7 trillion of value. Uh, and we know, of course, we spoke about this yesterday again, but South Korea, Japan, those countries are a lot more technologically forward uh, than some of the other countries. So, um, Forrest, any thoughts on, on this Hong Kong one specifically? Um, I mean, $25 billion in demand, of course, these are hypothetical numbers, but what's your forecast if, you know, we get this Hong Kong one and South Korea and then, uh, our, you know, people talk about hyper-Bitcoinization is what's happening globally now when with the markets and the, the, the government's printing debt out of control. Uh, do you think this could push Bitcoin's price to, I don't know, 250000 300000 by, you know, let's say the next 12 months? Uh, yeah, it's not out of the question. I mean, it's uh, it's very positive for Bitcoin. Uh, I think it really just depends on. I mean, ultimately, this is just like more liquidity, more more market participants, more availability. It, like getting a an ETF listing is kind of like um, an altcoin getting a Coinbase listing or a Binance listing, where you just have more access to more capital for more people. Um, so this looks like you know ETF listing in in China is like more more uh, you know more access to more capital and more people, um, which is, you know, similar to, to an exchange listing at a, at a smaller scale. So this is just at a larger scale with Bitcoin. And I think it's, uh, I think it's bullish. I think it's bullish. It's going to bring more liquidity and more people to, to Bitcoin um, and only going to be a net positive. I think what's unique about China is we're seeing their citizens are trying to, they're just grasping at getting exposure to assets and products and money outside of their own economy uh, as you can see, they're dumping millions and billions of dollars into the Japanese economy, into the Japanese uh, stock market, uh, into the Korean stock markets, into the European stock markets. And so giving them access to the Bitcoin ETF via the spot ETF, via Bitcoin via the spot ETF, I think, uh, is, a, is a slam dunk. Uh, all right. Let's talk about a uh, talk about this. Ripple released uh, 500 million XRP tokens from escrow today. And it's actually not the first of the month. Typically, these happen once a month, but this is the second one. Um, someone's speculating here that it could be a settlement isn't coming. It's approximately $300 million uh, that has been released for the second time this month. This is one of the big reasons uh, I am not long-term bullish on as far as from a price appreciation standpoint. From an investor standpoint, and I want to make money, part of the reason I'm not bullish on, on as bullish on XRP as, as some people are. Uh, Robin, any thoughts on this? Not, uh, not ideal, mm -hmm. put it that way. But what are they using it for? Obviously, they've unlocked it for something. Maybe, the price? maybe it's to provide liquidity for certain exchanges. Maybe, maybe there's some some listings coming out, and mm -hmm. maybe some banks are using it. Maybe just just speculation. I don't know. In the same way that you're speculating that you're, it's going to get dumped on the on the market at some I'm point. I'm not saying it's going to get dumped on the market. So I think that's I say that. I think that's what that's not what I said. I didn't say you said that, but I think I feel like you're insinuating with your your questioning here that I am just that this is. I you even just, said this is why I am not bullish on XRP. Right. So obviously you find this as a negative, right? I do find this as a negative. Okay, then but why why is it a negative? Because. The Ripple executives and the Ripple team have said that they are looking to stabilize the price of the token through the unlocks. So, I'm sorry, but uh, if I'm looking for gains, I'm not looking for a stable price. If I want that, I'll just buy Tether. Forrest, any quick thoughts on this before we move on to some charts and stuff? Um, I'm I'm pretty bullish on XRP in the long term time frame. Um, the big the big charts like the long like the like the weekly, monthly, three month charts look pretty productive. Like a, just massive coiling up. Um, not sure entirely what the catalyst would be to set that um, you know uh, on its path upwards. Maybe it's the stable coin they're working on, um, and it could take you know six months to a year before that kind of catalyst arrives. Um, in the meantime, I don't know what this XRP is being unlocked for. If it's sold off, it's obviously very short term bearish. But um, XRP, I think, should be on a lot of people's watch lists when this stable coin comes out. I'm very very bullish on stable coins and um, the tokenization of of dollars and fiat currency on chain. I think there's going to be a lot of money moving on chain. And I think um, there's only two players. There's basically Circle and Tether. Tether's pretty sketchy. Um, so I think if a player like like Ripple could come in and take up a lot of market share, um, they could potentially 
uh, make a lot of revenue. So then uh, short term bearish, um, very long term, I think it's worth paying attention to Ripple and XRP. You know, it's never not it's never bad to have two stable coins in the ecosystem. It's pretty good, right? Uh, then we have this is pretty cool. So we know Russell. Uh, this has been a trend among uh, at least in the NFL from what I've been following. Uh, the thing, the big name here was Russell Okung was taking his uh, salary in Bitcoin that says towards the top of last market, and everyone called him a fool, pointed, laughed at him when everything went down. And well, guess who's laughing now? And here we have Demario Davis, one of the leading linebackers in the NFL, uh, says it makes too much sense and uh, to, and he would like to make his uh, money in the NFL in Bitcoin. And so this is a trend I believe we're going to continue to see. On the flip side, uh, you have the IMF demanding El Salvador change its Bitcoin law to get a $1.4 billion loan. I'm hoping Mr. Bukele flips him the bird and says, no, thank you. Uh, and then we have this, and then for us, if you want to queue up a Bitcoin chart, my friend, uh, Bitcoin sentiment shifting from anticipation to optimism as the having comes near. I want to make it very clear. If you're new and you're watching, the having does absolutely nothing for the price. If you're buying Bitcoin because of the having, you think the price is going to go up by double, that's not how it works, okay? So with that being said, Forrest, Bitcoin chart, what's it look like, my friend? Yeah, let me share my screen here. Uh screen share oh, here we go yeah so um i think i have already grabbed this fractal if i haven't just give me a second to grab it um yeah it's the fractal from last market cycle over here where we broke that all-time high so far we look very similar to it um so as of right now i'm i'm personally bullish on on bitcoin and bullish on crypto until proven otherwise this looks very similar to the last time we broke this this all-time high. And I brought this up here before, but essentially this was breaking um, 20K right here, 20K. And we've technically already broken our all-time high, but we're just consolidating around it. Our previous all-time high was like $69,000. We've taken a, a few a few uh, splashes above it and gotten rejected, uh, but we're just con kind of consolidating around it. Um, for me, I'm technically bullish until proven otherwise. Well, what does until proven otherwise mean? Well, uh, if we start making a lower low, if we come down and we take out $64,500, um, that is my trigger for, look, It's not that, that's not what you want to see. You do not want to see a daily trend um, go from, you know, higher, low, higher, low, you know, higher, higher, high, higher, high, higher, low. And, you know, right now we've got to, we've got to make, we've got to see Bitcoin make a higher low, um, here in the next, you know, week or two, if it doesn't make a higher low and we travel back down below 64 and a half thousand dollars, that is to me where I'm, I'm de-risking where I'm, I'm going to, um, look for some short opportunities, maybe some put options, whatever it is, whatever I've got to do to get some, um, positive, you know, exposure to the downside. Meaning, if Bitcoin comes down and flushes below forty nine fifty k, and takes all of this liquidity down there, um, I want to be, you know, making money to offset the losses, the temporary losses in my spot portfolio, because I think that would be very, uh, very, you know, I think it'd be a good flush and a good, a big, uh, you know, buying opportunity. But what this scenario does to altcoins is very, very scary. Um, and if you have any leverage in the market at all, you're probably going to get liquidated, right? So first and foremost, I do not think now is the time to be going in with large amounts of leverage with any significant amount of risk. Um, that said, like I said, my base case is bullish, bullish until proven otherwise. If we come down here and make a higher low, right, and we come back that back up above 69K, then I think we probably explode to the upside, just like we did last market cycle. Um, that is that is the base case, but I am open to both scenarios. Right now, we are just consolidating. Um, I don't think there's a lot to be done um, in either direction while we're consolidating. I don't think you want to be over trading here, over positioning, overthinking it. Um, you know, simplify a plan and stick to it. Right. So if we break out to the upside, I'll be looking to add add risk. I'll be, I'll happily add risk here, and I'll look to you know buy alts and and ride them higher. Uh, if we break down to the downside, um, I want to I want to de-risk. If we get a fake out in either direction, that's a painful scenario to trade because you kind of de-risk and hedge, and then that short-term trade goes underwater, and you've got to flip back, you know, flip flip back bullish. Uh, if that happens, it, it could happen. Um, but I'm pretty tied to the idea uh, of I think it's very likely we start closing candles below sixty-four and a half thousand dollars. 
you want to watch out below um, because this is a huge, huge gap, right? This is, this is, uh, I believe technically it's called a fair value gap. If you look at volume profiles, it's a big gap. I mean, there's a um, pretty, pretty fast and aggressive um, path down back down to this liquidity pocket down here at 50 K. If we start breaking down from this daily uptrend um, that said, again, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not puking on this candle today. You know, there's been some bad news in, in the markets. Um, there's been, uh, the, the S and P 500 and stocks crashing DXY up breaking out. Um, I don't necessarily think now is the time to puke everything when we are still, you know, we still have very much intact market structure for Bitcoin. Uh, but I also want to you respect the fact that, Hey, we are, this is, you know, one of the worst daily candles we've seen, um, in quite a while, right. It's been a, you know, a couple of weeks since we saw this last big red daily candle. Oh, um, I don't flushed. necessarily want to be a buyer yet. I want to, I want to save, I want to save capital just in case, just in case I'm all, I'm, I'm exposed to the market personally enough right now. If we you see some upside, I'll be happy to buy the breakout. But otherwise, I want to have some capital on the side to buy altcoins if they get 60, 70% corrections down here at 40 to uh, 49 to 50 K. Because if we do see that scenario, I do think that the ultimate path is still upwards. Um, but I think you'll just get steep, steep discounts on altcoins down here um, and make a, a ton of money um, you know, while everyone else is getting liquidated. So yeah, the markets, um, just open to both uh, scenarios. Open to both scenarios. Markets are getting crushed right now. I mean, taking a look at the, as you mentioned, the stock market, the Dow is down 520 points. NASDAQ is down 284 points. S&P is down 1.5%. We take a look at Bitcoin. I know you just had the chart 66.4. When I asked you for the chart for us, we were a thousand dollars more than where we're at now. And so the markets are bleeding. Take a look at the one hour. Worldcoin is down 12% on in one hour. Injective down 11.8%. Now 13% over the one hour. Singularity down 11. So multiple double digit hour candles to the downside. Gala, Bonk, Ondo, Jupiter, Arbitrum, DYDX, Celestia is down over 10%. And so the markets are bleeding. Uh, but uh, for me, and, and I just want to speak to the people that are maybe new, that you're maybe tuning in because you're wondering what the hell's going on. You're freaking out. Uh, my thesis for my investments are this, is prior to me entering a position or opening a position into a Bitcoin or an altcoin, uh, I have a reason why, whether it's user adoption, whether it's developers are building on it, whether it's, hey, this is the fastest blockchain, whatever that reason for you is, no matter what the price is doing, if that reason has not changed on a fu fundamental level, there is absolutely no need to panic, right? In fact, these are buying opportunities as long as you're not over leveraging yourself, uh, not just in trading, but in the actual amount of money you have. If you have $5,000 to your name, I don't recommend throwing $5,000 into the cryptocurrency markets uh, because you never know what can happen. And also, you never know what can happen in your life if you need to pull, that, pull on that money. Uh, but just um, this, this is the space of crypto, man. We have big swings to the downside. We have big swings to the upside. But over a longer time period, uh, you will make money if you're in the right projects. Uh, and so that's kind of my thing. Robin, do you want to say anything to uh, or any thoughts on this? Oh, we're, we're at 65.4. Damn, we are getting, I mean liquidations must be liquidations gotta be just getting just, yeah i'm just i'm just watching the price just tank here um let's take a look at liquidation interesting here. you know we we haven't had that we haven't had that very strong pullback since we took off right and in previous bull market cycles we've seen the price of bitcoin uh move parabolically up and to the right but in that journey, historically, it is typically pulled back, uh, sometimes 20 to 30 percent. And is that what's in the cards right now? Perhaps. I mean, you know, if you go back to 20, you go back to uh, 2021's run up. Um, I don't have any charts here. You know, Forrest, uh, are you able to pull up any charts to, you know, because I, I have the the coin market cap, but uh, do you have any charts on on perhaps some of the pullbacks that we've seen last bull market cycle, or maybe even in 2018, and to see like what is what is the normal pullback at uh, when we're 
making these very, very strong moves on the macro time frame for Bitcoin. What is this an expected pullback? Because I, you know, I hear in 2021, just off of uh, the coin market cap chart, you know, you see we got up to about 40,000 and we pulled back down to 30. So, I mean, that's a quite significant pullback. And then here you had 55 down to 46. So, um, of course, do you have any any insight on on what a typical pullback would be in in a bull run? Uh, yeah. So historically, we've seen in in bull runs, we've seen pullbacks to the tune of uh, 30, 40 percent. Even last market cycle, we saw this huge pullback of about 50 plus percent all the way back. Uh, you know, when when there was a lot of FUD around, you know, China banning Bitcoin mining, um, there was FUD around Tesla. Um, 55% pullback that we ended up rallying to new all-time highs um, afterwards, right? Um, along the way, we saw you know a huge run followed by a 30% correction um, from 42 all the way down to 29. And then even before we broke the all-time high, right, we saw that 11.5% correction and preceding that we saw a 17% correction. Um, Bitcoin's not in a deep, and what's you know painful right now for altcoins Bitcoin's not in a deep correction right now. Now it's a very sudden volatile correction filled with a lot of liquidations and that could, you know, cascade us further down. I want to see us print a higher low. Like I said, um, if we start pushing down here below sixty four and a half thousand dollars, I'll probably log off the live stream because I'll have to, to, you know, off the de-risk a little bit. Um especially if we close the daily or the weekly down here below sixty four and a half thousand dollars. It's not what I want to see. Um until then, right now, we're fine. Right now, we're fine. We're starting to see a little bit of a bounce back. Right now, we are from our all-time high. Initially, we saw, what, a 17% pullback, right? And then uh, an 11.5 or what are we, 10.59. That's what we saw last market cycle. Um, pretty pretty much exactly. We saw that initial 17% pullback off of the break of the all-time high. Um, and then we you know, had it followed up by about a, a 10, 11 you know, 12% pullback off of the next high. Um, so far, so good. I mean, it, it's this is what what we saw last market cycle. Um, doesn't mean it's comfortable. Doesn't mean it's good for alts. Doesn't mean that there's not, you know, things going on in the world and news and headlines that, you know, may be contributing to price action. But so far, we are seeing buyers step in and make a higher low or try to make a higher low. Um, if that changes, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, then you look at some of these these alts, um, you're getting some solid prices on a lot of them, breaking down from some patterns here. You're seeing Dogecoin down below 17 cents, seeing uh, Bitcoin Cash tap $500, um, seeing Litecoin back down at $81, XRP at 52 cents. Um some other ones here. If we go down, I don't think I've got ETH pulled up. ETH down at thirty two hundred dollars. So you've got ETH down here at support. If you're if you've been sidelined and you've, you're waiting for an entry, um, and you are underexposed to the market as opposed to you know what many people are probably uh, many people are probably overexposed in the market right now. But if you happen to be one of the people that are underexposed, you have not been able to get a position into coins that you want positions into. Now would be a time to maybe dabble and and you know take take a little nibble, take a little bite. Um, I'm not saying go all in on a, a liquidation like this. Could get worse, especially if we make a, a lower low on Bitcoin. Uh, I think you want to save some capital for a scenario of you know under 50k. But now's you, you. I mean, usually the best time to bid is off of these big red liquid. I say red on my chart they're you know they're white candles but these these big uh sell-offs these big liquidations are usually the time where you want to buy and they usually form a local bottom around this time so personally i would not as as bad as the market's getting wrecked right now i wouldn't be surprised if this turns into a local low and then we go up from here um it's not out of the question for me again i'm paying attention to market structure if we make a if we start closing candles down here, that's where I get really uncomfortable. I don't want to close candles down in the 63-64k range because that means the market's accepting that Bitcoin price. That means the market's sticking down there and it's saying, "Hey, 63k Bitcoin, that's fine. Um, we're not buying it, right?" And if the market's not immediately buying Bitcoin back up at you know 64-65k, um, that's that's a, a bad sign, and and I think there's a lot of leverage built up in the market, and we could find ourselves down here. But again, I'll reiterate: I think uh, I think we're fine for right now. We just gotta we just gotta watch, pay attention, and be open to both uh, open minded to, to any scenario that we get. But 
so far so good. 10, 10, 11 percent correction. I'm fine with that. Well, I know uh, one thing that's above a uh, larger correction than 10 percent is the meme coins. Meme coins are getting absolutely hammered right now. Uh, if you take a look here, you have the Bonk ecosystem, Pepe, Bonk eco, or Bonk Pepe, and Dog with Hat all down over twenty five percent in just the last twenty four hours. Uh, Look at you, that hour candle, God. Yeah, and Bonk is down sixteen percent on the hour. Pepe down fourteen percent on the hour, and then Dog with Hat down ten percent. Cardona's at 46 cents. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting to see where the, you know, obviously the the, the projects that are a little bit more speculative, uh, Core was the other one that was down significantly. Uh, this had a massive run-up uh, earlier this week, and this is down 44% right now as well. So speculative projects, meme coins, taking the biggest hit right now, uh, and then... To look back, I know you mentioned here that some of these layer ones are coming in at surprising prices. Uh, Solana is down 12% right now. Uh, XRP down 13 and Doge down 14% as well. So Doge also down significantly being a meme coin. And Cardano, as, we men as you mentioned, almost 20% in the last 24 hours. Cardano's down over 10% on the one hour Holy so shit. big red candle there on that if you have any trade positions opened up on any of these you are more than likely facing liquidation if not already look triggered at, look at this look at that one hour <laughs> liquidations in one hour 400 million dollars of liquidations in one hour and the percentage 90% of those are longs. Uh, that's pretty massive. And that is why we continuously say, if you're going to trade, be careful trading with leverage because this is what happens. And as long as the crypto markets stay highly levered, leveraged, you're going to see massive swings like this. Forrest, any, um, any, anything pop out of you as a potential opportunity to make some money on a long trade here? Um, taking a look at the prices, as Rob mentioned, you know, Cardano at 46 cents. Solana uh, is at a 153, got down about 148. Anything stand out at you or, or any positions you're looking to maybe enter or I don't know, something else? Um, like I think you I think you want to be in things that have a strong thesis based trade for when uh, the market's not bleeding and red. You know, what is money going to flow back into? Um, well, I mean, obviously, potentially, you know, I think Bitcoin's got a strong, you know, thesis based trade with, you know, the ETF and the halving coming up. I think, you know, that's, you know, probably considered among the, the safer bets when we're talking about, you know, crypto as a whole. Um, for me, I know it seems very unsafe at the surface level, but I still strongly believe that Doge, Bitcoin, Cash and Litecoin are probably going to be uh, getting ETFs at some point in the future. Um, we've already seen Coinbase Derivatives LLC file for futures uh, derivatives trading in the U.S., which is a really important step for getting ETFs. They're also just Bitcoin forks. Um, so I think that's a strong thesis-based trade. Um, I w the one thing I wouldn't be doing is I wouldn't be leveraging up right now in a volatile market like this. I, I would not be using more than 2x leverage. I think more than 2x leverage is just like you're asking for, uh, for, for you know, pain. Um, so I, I like Dogecoin and Bitcoin Cash very contrarian. Eh, Dogecoin's not that contrarian. Bitcoin Cash is contrarian. But um, yeah, anything that has a very strong, like Bitcoin beta. And when I say Bitcoin beta, I mean like anything that's going to do well if Bitcoin does well. Usually Dogecoin follows Bitcoin. Um, you could probably make a case for like Stacks right now. I don't know what Stacks is doing at the moment, but um, you know, layer two built on Bitcoin, that's probably going to bounce back really nicely if and when Bitcoin bounces back. So um, yeah, anything that you can really get behind and, and have a reason um, for, uh, for a lot of people buying. If it's just something that's kind of random, that doesn't have a catalyst coming up, doesn't have a reason for people to put money back into it, um, I, I think it's, I think you're taking a little bit too much risk. Um, you know, you know, there's just some random layer ones that don't have anything exciting going on. Um, just some, you know, random like, like I wouldn't be buying Metaverse right now to be honest. Like, it, what's the Metaverse catalyst? I, I don't know, right? So if you can't like. 
articulate why you think something is going to go up and why you think a lot of people are going to buy back into it in the future, uh, I'd probably be staying away. But yeah, I like I like Bitcoin and Bitcoin beta right now um, as, you know, as you know, simple as You know, that guys, sounds. you know, we have missed the boat completely here. We have missed the boat completely. We're talking about inflation hedges. No one even brought up the fact that BNB is only down 3%. Wow. Guys, is there a better hedge against the crypto markets than BNB? Yes. It, Everything yeah. is down like double digits. BNB is only down 3%. Uh, not surprising. Yeah. Uh, I do want to add on to what Forrest was saying is that identifying uh, projects to perhaps get exposure to at discount right now and ones that are having catalysts moving forward. Obviously, as, as you mentioned, Bitcoin and Bitcoin ecosystem, uh, you do have the halving coming up in just a week. And then on top of that, uh, you do have some other bullish news. So in the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, we have BlackRock's, uh, well, well, first, the back to the Bitcoin ETF. BlackRock's a Bitcoin ETF crosses $15 billion in total gains. Uh, so $15 billion in inflow since January's launch. Uh, not Nothing to sneeze at here. And at some point, as we mentioned, <laughs> Grayscale selling will subside. Also, in the ETF landscape, Ethereum's ETF approval could come Monday in Hong Kong. And so, even though we are dismissing the ETF approval for Ethereum here in the States, Hong Kong is uh, giving the green light to the Ethereum ETF, or so it seems, which could unlock a surge of liquidity there as well. And then lastly... Oh, no hey, I'm not not to joke here, but Solana's deploying a congestion a congestion fix on its DevNet. So uh, Solana came out earlier today and was urging the um, the node operators to update uh, some of the fixes that they deployed to alleviate the stresses on the network. And you know, could this put the uptime for Solana and the transactions throughputs to get up over 95% and closer to 100% transactions going through, uh, it could be something on the table, something to think about. And Solana's down pretty heavy today as well. Uh, so take a look at the uh, upcoming short-term catalyst to, to push the price up because right now everything is on discount. Hmm. You know what's not on discount is the money Uncle Sam wants from you. Which is why it's so important to have a good tax person. Which is why today's show is also brought to you by Decrypted.tax. Um, hey, did you get liquidated? Maybe you can write that off as tax season approaches in just three days. Uh, you're going to want to hit up Decrypted.tax. Uh, Ernest and his team will do a great job of making sure that you keep more of the money uh, you made last year and pay less to Uncle Sam for you in the U.S. Uh, click the link to set up a free consultation. So big shout out to Decrypted.tax. And then I want to give a shout out to those of you that are new here if you're new say hello we'd love to give you a personal shout out or personal hola back at you uh we have golden giant dark mike mark dutch bitcoin trader young penitent uh crashman spelintz also vic q crypto reaper rob methuselah and uh, all of you hola welcome to yeah. sin city crypto if i butchered your name there in pronunciation my apologies Still love you. Ucho. Definitely on purpose. And then also, uh, I want to know, what do you guys think of the market? Do you think that uh, there is a lower lower, uh, lower pr uh, Bitcoin price here on the horizon? Do you think going into this weekend, we're going to spill off even more than we are now? Will we see a sixty-five dollars or $64,000 Bitcoin? Put a one in the chat if it's doom and gloom on the horizon. But if this is just a short-term price drop that is been the cause of the mass uh, cascading liquidations almost a half a billion dollars worth of longs liquidated in just one hour this is just that candle to the downside to liquidate bounce back coming put a two in the chat if this is short-lived and we'll be back on to our trajectory of 70 80 000. well uh someone um someone super chatted us and said could it have something to do with Iran and what's happening over there with the drone attacks. Uh, I believe, yes, I believe it is. I don't know. Uh, you don't think so? No. 
Okay. Uh, I think so. Forrest, do you think so? You got to break the tie here. You think that has uh, any weight on what's going on in the markets? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would say that's probably a large part of it, right? I think we're, you look at the S&P 500, you look at equities, we've been in a like six month stretch of up only, uh, we started consolidate move sideways. Um, so price action was, and same in cryptos, crypto has been up only for a while. Um, starting to consolidate, distribute sideways, um, and, and looking for a reason to to correct and deleverage the market. And I think you um, you know take into account some breaking news today and some you know geopolitical tensions and some war breaking out, and it's you know kind of a recipe for a, a correction, which you know leads to and you know uh, a recipe for people like you know starting to sell and, and take risk off, which kind of leads to a deeper correction in the short term due to liquidation. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see, uh, you know, that's, that uh, be one of the contributing factors. Awesome. Uh, and I'm just going to take a look at a Bitcoin chart on the lower time frame, maybe a 15 minute Bitcoin chart. It looks like we are potentially recovering here. Um, as you saw this massive spill off as Bitcoin hit that discount zone here on, on Lux Algo. Um, but again, and this actually, uh, this 15-minute candle can be really good. If this thing closes, that is a hammer candle at the bottom of a big downtrend, which typically signifies a reversal. Uh, the first immediate level that we should meet as far as resistance is going to be right around 68.2. As we saw a massive spill off uh, from that level where we, we tried to reclaim, right? When we spilled off down around 67.2, we pushed back up a little bit and then we saw a bigger spill off to the downside. Take a look at the uh, visible volume range profile here. Take a look at, hey, where are some bids coming in? Where's the uh, buying and selling happening? Uh, you can see that big gap in volume here. That's where we have that big drop off. And then price kind of caught right around this 66.4 area. So a lot of buying and selling is happening on this, on this, this, uh, in this area here as well. Zooming into the one hour, uh, Bitcoin's making up some of the, gain, some of the losses. Uh, still though, I think... Price has stabilized a little bit, if you want to call this stable, compared to what the price of Bitcoin did. Um, what's your, uh, any kind of final thoughts on the price action here, guys, before uh, before we sign off? Do, do you think, like, like Forrest, what's your, like, next level of important uh, resistance that, that we, we know Bitcoin needs to reclaim, maybe on the lower time frame? Uh, yeah, I can share my screen here entire screen boom okay um yeah so like i said higher low i'm fine with right if we make a higher low here that was you know buyers come back in um that is great i think a lot of that's go i i wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of a uh retrace back upwards over the weekend right as these these um uh trad five markets close i think you know you got to probably have t it's friday right these markets don't trade over the weekend so you probably have a ton of de-risking happening um, going into the weekend, this really reminds me of when, um, you know, the Israel, you know, the Israel attack that we got, um, I forget when it was, but that first is attack on Israel. Um, you saw a lot of de-risking into the weekend and a lot of fear into the weekend. And then that ended up being, oh, go ahead. It was October 7th of last year. Yeah. So, I mean, let's, you know, let's check out what October 7th of last year looked like, uh, October 7th, right? So that was kind of that local high. And then we saw this kind of fear dip and then it was up only from there. Um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, we saw like a 6% pullback in Bitcoin. I'm not saying that we're going to do the exact same thing. Um, and we're going to rally, you know, off after a, a correction. It wouldn't surprise me if we did, but um, I do re recall, you know, a lot of fear going into that weekend um, into, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then, you know, a little spill off into the next week. And then it was up only from there. Um, so we could see something like that. Want to see us make a higher low, like I mentioned. Um, as far as levels to pay attention to to get over sixty nine thousand, our previous previous all time high. That's the level above sixty nine thousand. Um, I remain pretty whoops, pretty pretty bullish, pretty comfortable above our previous. When I say previous all time high, I mean last cycle's all time high. Um, and you can kind of see how we've interacted with this level in the past. It looked like we were putting in a bit of a inverse head and shoulders here, and then we've kind of spilled off. Uh, but yeah, I, I think as long as we come up and we make a, a higher low, um, or at the very least, you know, 
I don't mind if we dip down below $64,500 and take all this liquidity down here. If we just get bought right back up above it, right? And we see Bitcoin just move right back up. If we start hanging out down here below $64,500 and this trend line here does not hold, I don't like that. And then I want to de-risk. And it, this is where the market can just really, really punish you, right? Because, you know, alts are already down 20, 30%. A lot of them are down 40% from their highs. So it's like, uh, what's the point in selling these alts, you know, 40 to 50% off. Um, but if Bitcoin does go down to, you know, 50K, um, the alts will probably drop another 40 or 50% and you can probably buy them back down cheaper. So um, again, I think uh, we just need to, we just need to kind of wait and see. I think Monday's open um, for the stock market is going to be really important to see yeah. how, how does the stock market do uh, Monday and Tuesday, once the dust settles a little bit on some of these news developments, as of right now, it's down 1.6 percent with S and P 500. Um, not seeing any like you know bullish divergences or anything like that. But we just need to see. Um, hey, are buyers going to step in here? Uh, you can see kind of we're starting to trend downwards now a little bit on the daily. Um, are buyers going to step in and you know start buying stocks again? Um, like I said. Bitcoin trades very much like a risk asset at the moment, um, very correlated with the stock market at the moment. Um, it doesn't look too dissimilar, you know, a little bit more volatile. But uh, yeah, I think uh, as of right now, there's a strong chance this is a local bottom and we head up. I want to see us get over $69,000. Um, as long as we're between $69,000 and that 64 and a half, you know, 64 level, uh, I know the chart's getting messy here. I'll, you know, give final thoughts here. Uh, right there and $69,000 right there. Um, as long as we're in the middle here, as long as we're in this zone, I don't want to do too much. I don't want to over trade. I don't think Bitcoin has told us which direction it's moving yet. Um, and until we, we see something like this or something like this, I don't really want to, I don't want to really mess with anything. Uh, I think you've, you know, if you've, if you've been on leverage, you're liquidated. There's like very small chance that you're not, unless you're using very low leverage, um, you're probably liquidated. So I would not, I would not introduce more leverage here. I'd be very, very, you know, patient and, uh, just be holding spot positions and wait for a breakout in either direction. Awesome. Uh, Forrest, we're going to let you go, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us, brother. We appreciate you. Always a pleasure having you on, and uh, we look forward to having you on again next week. All right, brother. See you guys. Take care. Thanks for having me. Peace. Thank you, brother. Uh, real quick, Robin, real quick. Uh, no, Joe said, uh, is the market down because of the SEC versus Uniswap? I don't believe so. Nah. I believe the market is down uh, for one reason, and that reason is what is happening in the Middle East with Israel and Iran. Um, we, as Forrest showed you from October 7th, the market sold off, saw the price of gold going up. So a lot of people are spooked. They're a little scared. Uh, but again, and I'll repeat what Forrest said, it's important to watch the levels that Bitcoin just reacts to almost immediately. And 65.5 was one of those levels. If you go back to the Bitcoin chart here, um, you can see if we go down again to the 15 minute, uh, we wick down to this 65, well, 65 flat. Bitcoin shot right back up. But again, it tried to dip below 66, got scooped right back up. And so that seems to be a level where a lot of buy orders are in and people feel confident that the risk to reward ratio of buying Bitcoin at that price level is a good one. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll go ahead, Rob. Uh, I do want to give a little uh, shout out to those of you that are new here. Uh, we have... Uh, Ivan Cito, DDG, uh, Damien, Balalak, Lava, the Rugged Nerd, Andreas, Joe A, Hino Kio, and Disrupt to all of you. Hola! Welcome to Sin City Group. So let me take a look at the, the top losers over the last one hour, right? So as Robin mentioned, Core is down 18.4%. Um, anything on this list here that you see as a, as a, wow, that's a great entry. Let me potentially deploy some capital from this list that's on your screen here. What do you think? On um, the, on the ones that are down the most right you now? You got Polkadot down 14%, $6.61. Filecoin is down 13.5%, $6.29. You got Gala at 4.5 cents yeah, down 13%. Gala is down quite significantly. Caspa's at 12 cents. Injective, 25 bucks. Injective got up to almost $50. And it's at 25 bucks. That might be a good pickup, actually. Injective. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Anything kind of stand out to you on the one hour as far as the biggest losers? 
I think uh, Gala might be the one that stands out the most, honestly. Uh, maybe a good time to get into Filecoin. Filecoin's also down significantly, down to $6.28. Uh, a lot of these tokens are down more than 20% on the week. Uh, if you take a look here at mine, you have... Uh, so I have the, the biggest losers on the week on the seven days here. So organized from mo uh, biggest drawdown. So when you go past Uniswap, a lot of times I like to zoom out on these to see, because if you look at just the 24 hours, you might just be making up some overbought uh, gains that we had a couple days ago. So for me, when I'm looking to get into a project that might be uh, down significantly. I like to look at the the one week. So on the week, Sui's down twenty seven point eight nine percent on the week. Uh, if you're a fan of Sui, this might be a good spot to get in on it. Uh, Sui outside the top fifty. A lot of retail buzz for this. The community is uh, pretty strong for Sui there. So that might be one I'm eyeballing. Uh, also, Filecoin, as I mentioned, or the Graph. Uh, both projects outside the top 30, probably going to have a big run up to this bull market. Uh, so if you've if you've looked at getting in on these tokens, this might be something good to uh, get exposure to now, uh, or even injective protocol as well. Uh, then you got Mina protocol down 24% and ICP as well, down almost 25% on the week. We do have an ICP video coming out today. I know this is something we've been covering a lot more lately and it's because it's one of our favorite projects and it's something we think has a lot of room to run uh we've seen we've seen their roadmap blueprint and they are well putting their money where their mouth is and the developers are executing and well the timeline moves forward and the end goal for icp uh looks ripe with profits uh, at least in the, the token price return so you're looking at uh, an investment there, not investment advice, of course, but for my own personal, I think that ICP is a really good play. 25% uh, off where it was a week ago today. Well, not too shabby. There you go. Um, all right. I do want to give uh, one more thank you to uh, Cam's Blue Wire Technology for sponsoring today's show. If you want to learn how they can help your business scale and grow, visit bluewiretech.com. Uh, I'll kind of end with this. Um, if you're new to the crypto space, if this is your uh, it's your first cycle, uh, this is completely normal. Believe it or not, 20% drawdowns, 20% gains. They're completely normal. It's volatile. That's why we always say never put in money that you're not willing to part with. Uh, again, again, reiterate this. If nothing has changed in your portfolio as far as why you decided to put money in those projects in the first place, price in the short term shouldn't really matter. In fact, it could be potential buying opportunities you like to uh, add to your position. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, and like what you were saying, here's an example. Like, Bitcoin's protocol hasn't changed at all. So obviously, Bitcoin three weeks from now is going to be exactly the same as it is now, minus, plus or minus uh, some money. Uh, but uh, you can look at like Uniswap, for example. There has been a fundamental change as far as how it's sold here in the United States and what that means for the company. Obviously, with the impending with the pending lawsuit coming uh, from the SEC, maybe it's time to revisit uh, your strategy there for that token. But for other tokens that don't have some kind of major catalyst that has caused the drawdown of price, and it's just the markets moving as they do, then uh, you know, take these uh, drawbacks as a buying opportunity. There you go. Uh, all right. With that being said. XRP, I mean, Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the content. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, ping your notification bell, and to all the channel members, enjoy the ICP video. It'll go public in a little bit. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. A nice weekend. I'm going to go buy some more XRP, by the way. Have fun.
beginners. Special shout out to the well members. Buy dip, sell winners. Ain't really nothing you can tell sinners. Tune in for the latest new flavors. They gonna teach us mean coins. They polarizing like barbecue chicken pizzas. I laugh with a major grin. Lag as we trade them in. Baddies, they came to sin. And sinners gonna play the win. Screaming, hola. Till my bags are flowing over. Hold ya. To the moon and to the solar. Won't I? Don't be letting FOMO control ya. It's over. When the finger tornado close ya.